Okay, what I'm going to show you now is called the Celtic Cross Spread. The Celtic Cross Spread is probably the most commonly used spread in tarot. It is not my favorite, but you will obviously find places and times that you want to use it. Uh, it can be very informative. So I'm going to show you, first of all, the layout of the cards. Uh, I'm going to lay them down face down, and then we'll turn them over and see what they have to say. So the first card that goes down is the the querents card. Basically this is going to state the position of the querent at the present moment. It's the reason why they are here, why they ask the question. Card number two is the crossing card. Card number two basically will will add to the information that we got from the first card. It will give us a few other clues as to what it is that has brought them to this point and why they're uh, asking the question of you in the first place. Card number three is the basis card. This is the history behind the question. This is why they, uh, the, this is the basis for the question in the first place. So this is why they've come to you for answers at this point in time. Card number four is the recent past. And the recent past is um, basically just that. It's the situation that has just come up recently, probably within the last couple of weeks, uh, that would have brought this question to the forefront. Card number five is the opposite of the basis card. It's basically the card that predicts what the future outcome is going to be overall. Card number six is the near future. It will tell us about what is happening, what is coming up in the near future in relation to this question. Card number seven is indicative of what the querent is bringing to the situation. What is it that they themselves, their attitudes and their uh, belief systems, what are they bringing to this question and, and the outcome? Card number eight is the environmental contribution. What are other people that surround them, uh, their family, their friends, uh, the other things that surround them, their job, their home, other things that might influence them in some way? How are they contributing to this situation and the outcome? Card number nine is the basic hopes and the fears of the querent. What is it that they worry about most with regard to this question? And card number ten is the outcome card with relation to this question. Now the difference, is, I will say now, between card number ten and card number five, this is the outcome for the question that's being asked at the moment. The card number five is more of a long range and will be more of an outcome based on everything in the current's life. So if nothing changes based on what we're seeing right now, then this would be the overall outcome. This is going to be the outcome with regard to this question. And you will see, if you start reading books, you will see that there are a variety of different ways of laying out this exact spread. Uh, some will regard this as card number three and work their way in a circle uh, a little differently. We t I take this one as card number three because it is the next one in line and it offers the most insight as to um, what has gone before. <clears throat> so let's take a look and see what we are working with in this particular reading. In this first position, which is where the current finds themselves right now, this is what's causing them to ask the question, we have the Knight of Pentacles. And Knights are always indicative of movement, and uh, the Pentacles have to do with life and, and your physical life, your home, your money, your health. So this is uh, indicative of a situation that the, that the current is holding to themselves. Since it's reversed, it indicates it's an internal thing. It really is telling, uh, telling us that they are not necessarily letting everyone know how concerned they are about the situation at the moment. But it has to do with their money. It has to do with their, their physical life and how they're going to go forward. Now crossing that, we have the Sixth of Pentacles. The six is a very hopeful card because it's, uh, it's 
it has met the challenge and and is ready to go forward. And if you notice in the artwork, this person is able to be generous. And so that's that is uh, an indication that maybe the situation isn't as troublesome as the querent is believing presently. Uh, there are other things to explore that uh, would give them other other uh, avenues of dealing with the situation. So it's may, it may indicate that they're worrying a little more than they should about the situation. So going down to the card number three, that's the, the history card, we have the Empress. And I'm going to guess that this is probably a reading for a woman, because the Empress is a very uh, feminine power kind of card, and she represents fertility and uh, nurturing, motherhood. So she's a very important card. She's also one of the major arcanas, so she's, uh, she gives us a lot of power and strength. The, I'm going to say that this indicates that this particular woman has always been in a position of being the, the motherly type. She's always been the nurturing one. In fact, maybe to a fault. She's been the one who gives of herself until she's depleted her own supplies and her own, uh, her own resources. So this is an indication then that maybe she needs to, to take care of herself a little better um, as she goes forward. So I'm going to go right on up to number five because that is the outcome. It's the direct opposite of this card. And that is the eight of wands. And the eights, if you recall, are the when things come together. The creative visualization has been done and you're ready to launch the new idea. So, and the wands being the self indicates that there's a whole new uh, way of being that's coming about here for this person. She's about to launch a whole new uh, way of looking at life and appreciation for herself. Now in the recent past, we have the Chariot. The Chariot is another major arcana card, so there's a lot of power in this reading. The Chariot is indicative of, of movement and power and precision. And in the recent past, it indicates, I'm getting that it's indicating that this person has been asked to make a move. And I'm going to say it's a spiritual move. It's one that is, uh, is one that's asking them to step out of the box a bit. And it's, it's going to require that they spend a bit more of their time and their, their resources on being more involved in their spiritual life. And that has brought the question, are they going to be able to do that? Is it going to be comfortable? Is it going to be easy? And any time we step out of the box, we're always going to find it's a little bit uncomfortable. So I think that's what the problem is with this, with this query, is she's trying to figure out how to relieve that stress as much as possible. So what's in the near future? Uh, the Queen of Wands. Again, we have wands. Wands are a big, uh, a big indicator of the self, the passions, the motivations, the things that make this person tick. And the Queen is in charge. She's power. She's uh, feminine power. She's particularly interested in moving forward and moving things uh, in, her, in her favor. So basically it's saying in this, as far as we're looking at both of the future cards, it's indicating that this person has a lot more resources to call on than they may even be aware of. So their, uh, their future looks a little brighter than they personally are able to see at the moment. So then we begin to work on the, the cards on the right side, and card number seven is, again, the, the uh, indication of what the querent is bringing to the situation. So what is she doing for herself in this particular case? And there we have the Ace of Wands. And this indicates a whole new beginning. It's a starting point. It's a whole new start over for herself. It's a looking at herself in a whole new fashion, being able to appreciate herself in a whole new way. And maybe even uh, learning that she's capable of things that she had never even considered before. So it's a very, very powerful card. Now you notice it's also reversed, so that indicates it's being held closely. She's not necessarily telling everybody about her new discoveries but she's feeling them and they even though she may not be telling them why they're noticing changes in her so what are those people around her 
people she works with, the people she lives with, what are they bringing to the situation? Yeah, the Four of Wands. Four of Wands indicates a considerable amount of support. It indicates that they are actually there for her in ways that she may not even fully appreciate and understand. Um, sometimes it can feel very lonely when you're starting something new and feel a little bit like you're being you're being ignored and you're out there all by yourself but this card indicates that there's more support there that uh, she can she can make available to herself and that she can take advantage of so um, she doesn't need to feel alone at this point overall this is actually coming together very nicely for her it looks like she's uh, she's putting things together pretty pretty well so then the card number nine card number nine is hopes and fears the things that worry her the hero font and it's reversed again the hero font is indicative of tradition and authority so based on the fact that this looks like it's a money issue and there's money involved on the crossing card even it I'm gonna say that this person is feeling unprepared um, feeling like the education isn't quite there feeling like her um, her degrees don't count and feeling like she just doesn't quite know enough to impress everyone she's not letting anybody know that that's how she feels she's keeping this because this is reversed she's keeping this in again and she's doing that all around the board if you notice she's doing lots of holding things in so what this is saying is um, she's worrying about that she's worrying about whether she's prepared for it or not and uh, all indications are she needs to let go of that and not uh, and not sell herself short so card number 10 once again this is the outcome based on what is happening presently and it is the two of cups the two of cups is basically the the establishing of a polarity it's uh, it's a it's an emotional situation and again it's being reversed so it's very much internalized for this querent so she is she is going to discover a whole new emotional attachment to the things that excite her and make her uh, and that motivate her to, that make her do things that she's always wanted to do so basically she's got a very good outcome uh, both places here from the overall outcome the long range and for just solving this problem she's got a lot of things going for her so basically she just needs to lighten up a little bit don't worry about things so much be aware that her experience definitely counts as much as any formal degree or traditional kind of schooling that she might feel she's missing and remember that she has a lot of support and enjoy the, the business of starting over realize it's a second chance to do what she wants to do and don't worry about this move because it's all going to work out it's actually going to build character and she's going to feel very good about herself going forward and knowing that she can launch into this new situation with confidence and poise so that's the Celtic cross spread it can be a little bit confusing sometimes since you do have outcome cards that may conflict with each other at times um, it's not uh, a particularly easy read sometimes depending on how it lays out this one actually flowed very very nicely and I dealt it just as it came off the deck so it was kind of interesting to see it fall um, and not knowing actually who we were reading for I still don't know who we're reading for but it's uh, it's a good indication of how things can can work with the Celtic cross spread so it's there for you anytime you uh, you want to use it it's easy to easy enough to put together so that concludes the presentation on the Celtic cross spread thank you